Okay, continuing on with the problem from page 11 on the centroid, I've taken equation one and equation number two, so that's this one here and this one, from the front side, which are the medians from A to side C, uh, BC and from B to side AC, and I solved the system. So I just used a substitution method. I put equation one into equation number two. I got that X, uh, equals negative one-third. Notice up here when I had the fractions, one of our rules that we learned back in grade nine and we reviewed again at the beginning of this year was that when you have fractions in your equations, if you multiply every term by the common denominator, which in this case is seven, uh, you can eliminate the fractions. So that's what I've done and that's how this line came about. And then I just solved my, or solved my equation to get x equals negative one-third. And then I substituted x equals negative one-third into the first equation because it's nice and easy. And I ended up with my y being equal to positive two-thirds. So that makes sense in terms of where it looks like the centroid should be based on the graph that we drew. Now, the other part to this was that we wanted to verify, so part F on that page 11, was to verify that the point um, of intersection actually lies on the third median, and the third median equation is right here. So I'm checking here, I'm doing a left side, right side check, everything checks out, works out that two-thirds equals two-thirds, left side equals left side, so we know that that third median does go through that intersection point as well. So that's the centroid. Um, if you've done the questions on the back, or when you do the questions on the back, I have solutions for them. So if you just put me on pause, make sure you try the questions. You want to come up with the equation of the line, of the median, from A to side BC for part A. So get the equation, just like we did with this question uh, on page 11, and then do it again, but find the median from B to side AC, and then you want to find the point of intersection for part C on the back side of this page. Put me on pause, try it out, and I've got solutions for you. Okay, question number one, we want to find the equation of the line that goes, that contains the median from point A to uh, side BC. So that means we need to find the midpoint of BC, which is what I've done here. Now I took that to decimal form only because that's a little bit simpler to work with. Um, I calculated the slope from, now this is the slope from A, so this is from A to that midpoint, from A to that midpoint of 6.5 comma 3.5. That's the slope for that. Uh, when you put that in your calculator, that's really poor form to have a decimal in a fraction. So if we actually use our fraction button and we try and simplify that, or you might know that three times 1.5 is actually equal to 4.5, that is a slope of one third there. So I put the slope into y equals mx plus b, and then I subbed the point uh, a, which is two comma two, I subbed that in for the x and the y. So the y became two, and then two times one third becomes two thirds. So that's where this came from, the two thirds. Subtract two thirds from both sides, I got a common denominator and subtracted, or use your fraction button, and I came up with this as our equation for our median from a to b, c. To get the equation of the median from B to side AC, we need to find the midpoint of AC because the, the equation we want goes through point B and goes through the midpoint of AC. So I calculated my midpoint of AC. Then I want the slope of the line from B, so this is from B to um, midpoint of AC. That's what this slope is, that's what we're finding. And I calculated that out to be a negative one half. I put that in for my slope in y equals mx plus b. I picked point b, which is uh, seven comma two. I put the two in for the y. I multiplied the negative one half by seven and that just gives me negative seven halves here. I add seven halves to both sides to undo it. I got a common denominator at the same time. Two is the same as four halves. Add those together and we get 11 halves. So I get my equation here. So now I'm going to solve the system in part C using my equation number two and the equation I found on the previous uh, slide. So here we're solving the system. I took equation number one up here and equation number two and I subbed one into two to get this. The next step here is I multiplied by the common denominator. The common denominator would be six. So I multiplied by six to undo the fractions. So six times one third would be two with the X. 
6 times 4 thirds turns into a plus 8. The 1 half times a 6 would be negative 3x, and then the 11 halves times 6 turns into a 33. So that's where these numbers here have come from on this line. And then I added 3x to both sides to get 5x, and <clears throat> at the same time I've subtracted 8 from both sides here. And 33 take away 8 gave me the 25. From there I divided both sides by 5 and x gives me a value of 5. So then I subbed x equals 5 into equation number 1 and I solved and got that y is equal to 3. So my centroid, my point of intersection is at 5, 3. So therefore the centroid, uh, here we go, want this button, uh, the centroid, that center of mass is at bracket 5 comma 3. Okay, the x was 5, the y is 3, and for some reason I put e 3. Okay. Anyway, I forgot the bracket. Oh, there we go. I think I'm back. There we go. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. The centroid is at 5, 3. Now in part D, you're asked to find the equation or the average of the three x coordinates for our three points that we were given and the average of the three y coordinates that we were given using this formula right here. So when you substitute those things in, do you notice that the answer was 5 thirds, which is the same as the centroid? So there's actually a shortcut for getting the centroid uh, for a triangle. It's the only one of our special points that we're going to learn about that has a shortcut. The other ones uh, require you to get the equations of whatever it is we're, we're working with, whether it's altitudes or perpendicular bisectors, and finding the intersection points, just like we've done with the medians here. But overall, you need to know that the centroid, to get that centroid quickly, it's going to equal the average of your x-coordinates the three x-coordinates of your vertices and the average of your y-coordinates of your vertices. So that's an important formula that you also need to know and should add to your I need to know this for, the, for this unit. Okay, so when you do question number two, I would like you to actually use that shortcut with these three points and come up with the location for the centroid.